Today we're going to talk about the topic of what is called polymorphism, essentially a very useful part of object-oriented programming which we need to get our head around. So uh, we specifically will concentrate on three objects, the base class pointers, virtual functions and pure virtual functions which is closely linked to the idea of abstract base classes which are also called interfaces. Okay. What is it? Polymorphism comes from the Greek poly, which means many, and morph, which means form. It's really the third pillar of object-oriented programming. It, the idea is that essentially if you want to create classes with the same structure, for example, all the function names are the same, but the methods that actually the implementation of these things are very different. It really makes very strong use of the idea of inheritance, it's closely linked to it, and also the idea of function overriding, so not overloading, overriding. Of central importance is the concept of the so-called base class pointer. As usual, the easiest way to go there is to look at a bit of an example to see what we're actually doing. Okay, let's look at the example of base class pointers. So I've got a very short piece of code, I've got a class called particle, which contains one double called charge, it contains a uh, constructor, and it contains uh, an output function which I call info. Then I've got a class ion, which inherits particle. It ca ca contains its own additional store, uh, variable it stores, which is the atomic number. And then I could have I got a uh, constructor which contains a double and a z, and right calls the constructor for the particle, and then calls the constructor for the atomic number, constructs the atomic number, and has an info function as well. So we've overridden the info function, which does something different. Okay, that's very nice. So the base class particle has one data member. The derived class has two data members. Both classes contain a member function info, and the function has been overridden. The result of calling info depends on which object type I call it with. So let's look at a very simple example of using our classes. I initialize a particle, I initialize an ion, and I print out the info, and indeed I get for the particle charge is one, one electron charge, and for an ion the charge is two electron charge. Atomic number is two, which is actually nothing more than the helium nucleus. Okay, lovely. Um, I can also use a pointer to an object of the base class type. So I can have a particle, blah, blah, blah and particle one dot info. I can define, declare a particle, which a pointer which points to a type of particle. Interestingly enough, I can either assign a base class element to it, but I can also assign ion to it, even though it's inherited from over there. Uh, so, so we've got this weird thing of called a base class pointer. That's the example. They are specials. They are also allowed to point to objects which are instantiated from a derived class, in this case ion, and call overridden functions info. But to call the overridden functions, we have to work a little bit harder. In this case, what will the code output? It, Inputs outputs a particle, charge this before, and then actually when I call the two info functions on the pointer, the first one is the same as before. Unfortunately, the second one calls the info function on the base class pointer. So they, it's using the info from the base class, even though it actually points to an ion. So the real question is, and the real use of this idea is, can we make base class pointers use the appropriate version of info? And the answer is, of course, yes. The idea of the answer is the, is the concept of a virtual function. So you modify the base class version of info. Initially it was this, and I just add one word in front of it. It's called a virtual void. So that's called a virtual function, right? By definition, yeah. the derived class function remains unchanged. And if I now only make those two changes to the code, it actually will call the right info function. So essentially, if a function is virtual, the overridden function will be called in a base class, uh, with a base class pointer, which is quite a neat trick, actually, to be honest. It's a powerful use. You can have arrays of mixed type, 
right? Essentially, you've got a particle array. So, so this is, these are all pointers. There's new particle, new ion. I can print out the info, and it does all the right stuff we want to do. Um, it defines an array of base class pointers. We can point to objects instantiated from the base or derived class. We use new to create instances of each class and then delete individual objects when finished to avoid memory leak. Recall for every new, there should also be a delete and I'm being very careful about that here. Okay, that's very standard. Uh, we had a virtual function, but let's actually see what we, whether we want to make a destructor virtual. And the answer is yes. These structures are called when an object goes out of scope. Usually it happens at the end of a function. These structures should be used to delete memory when using dynamic arrays and classes. And the standard advice is when using base class pointers, make sure your base class destructor is virtual. Because it, that means it's going to call the right base class, uh, the right destructor for the object we have. Uh, so when the object goes out of scope. If the base class pointer is not a virtual function, it means the base class destructor will always be called in preference to any derived class destructor. And since a derived class usually contains more data, that doesn't strike me as a very good idea. So, recap one. We've just demonstrated polymorphism in action. We used inheritance to create base class and derived classes. We used function overriding to change the action of the function info in a derived class. Defined a base class pointer to point to either type of object, made info a virtual function to access the correct function of info with a pointer. This is called runtime polymorphism. Only while running the code can we decide what version of info to call. Note, polymorphism relies on overridden virtual members, otherwise the base class pointer always refers to the base class member function. So in summary, the action depends on which object base class pointer is pointing to in the hierarchy. Classes used this in this way with virtual functions are also known as polymorphic classes. And there's an S missing there. Okay, but there is an even more powerful use of this. So let's jog on a little bit and go on to the next stage. Uh, in the previous examples, the objects could be created from either the base class or the derived class. But the base class is something special. It contains the virtual functions and its type is used when declaring the base class pointer. We can take this further. We can, and probably should, use the base class pointer as an interface only. Use the base class to declare virtual functions only. And the idea I will expand on is the idea for pure virtual functions. In the derived class, we now must overwrite the virtual functions. You don't have a choice and define direction. Otherwise, the derived class is also called an abstract or an interface, abstract class or an interface. Uh, the derived classes can still contain their own data and member functions. And even the base class can contain its own data and member functions. A base class that only declares existence of virtual functions is known as an abstract base class. Formally, base class becomes an abstract base class when converting at least one virtual function to a pure virtual function. So let me show you how. So we modify the base class and we've got a destructor over there, which we, I told you we're going to declare as a virtual function. And I'm going to declare, declare the info function as a virtual function, but I also write the equals zero at the end, which makes it a pure virtual function. The base class becomes an abstract base class because it contains a pure virtual function. Duh. Pure virtual functions have no method, okay? There's no implementation of them. They must be implemented in the derived classes. In this case, you use particle to declare what, a function what functions are common to all derived classes and as name of the base class pointer. All objects can be accessed using a base class pointer through particle, known as an interface. Okay, so we could have, for example, derived class for an electron, which inherits particle, it has its own charge, it has lots of lots of other good stuff in there. I could have an ion, which essentially contains both charge and atomic number, and etc., etc. And you can see I redeclare the function. These functions I don't have to tell are virtual, they are over overridden. Derived classes define members specific to each particle type. Okay, that's the idea. 
So if you look at an application like that, you can have a new ion, new electron, you can print the information, and essentially both types of particles which have their own function field are accessed using a single base clock pointer. That's the power of polymorphism. One interface, multiple method methods. Uh, so you can declare polymorphic arrays as arrays of base class pointer. So uh, this is a right. Uh, I can declare all of these things over there and then do new stuff, blah blah blah. So here I've just done an array. Right? This double pointer over there. It's a pointer to a pointer, which is perfectly legal. Then I can print the information, delete all the stuff, and etc. etc. We need to define new objects individually since they are different derived types. We use base class pointer to access members. We can then delete one object at a time in the end, uh, at the end, and the array see the output, okay, essentially, uh, of this code. Now, that's all perfectly fine and good. Clearly here, this is completely deterministic, so I could know at compile time what info I, I'm calling. But for example, if there was an input which decided what object I create, which object I call, it could only be determined at the time the code run what kind of object we have and how we use that. Cool. There's an alternative, of course, it might be better to use vectors, but it works exactly the same way. You push back these objects over there, you can call the info, etc, etc, and I can then iterate over the vector uh, to delete uh, all kinds of stuff. And that's how it clearly works. Okay, I mean, you want to look at a code a little bit more. It's kind of obvious. It's it's available, uh, and we delete each object to then clear the vector itself. And the output is as described over here. You may want to check that code over there just to see what it really does. Alrighty, let's summarize. We wanted to design classes for a set of related objects. We create a base class that contains members, data, and functions applicable to all the objects within the set. We make those map functions we wish to override uh, same name parameters, different methods, virtual functions. We do not want to create objects of the base class and use it solely as an interface, which is very good practice. We make our virtual functions pure virtual functions, assigning them to zero in the base class. And it's enough to do it with one function. Our base class is now known as an abstract base class, only accessible to derived classes, and we can call each object's virtual member functions with a single base class pointer. Okay, that was it for this week.